Hey guys, Dave here. So, have you ever wondered what it's like to work with and keep the top 10 most venomous snakes in the world? Well, I'm here in Queensland, Australia right now, and I'm gonna go visit with Ewan Edwards, who keeps the top 10 most venomous snakes in captivity, but Ewan Edwards not only works with them all, but he educates the public to separate the fact and the fiction of these amazing snakes. So Ewan and Bill Love and Adrian Hemans and I just spent a week in the outback. It was an amazing adventure, and if you want to check that out, pop on over to my new vlog channel. The link is in the description. But for now, let's go check out what it takes to keep and care for the top venomous snakes in the world here on Zilla Presents the Reptile Channel episodes. My name's Ewan Edwards and I live a boring life. I live in suburbia with a house full of snakes, a wife, two kids and lots of other animals. And it's very boring and dull. I work in the environmental industry where I do environmental consulting for various industries including mining and roads. And that, the other part of the business is doing educational awareness of reptiles, mainly non-venomous and a few marsupials and birds, but I also do venomous training, handling training and I also do venomous awareness work to try to get people to understand that even though they're venomous, they're not going to kill you. If you do proper first aid, chances are in Australia you're going to live, so there's no reason to be afraid, there's no reason to be afraid, and there's no reason to kill the snakes, just let them be, go along their merry lives. I, I grew up with my grandmother when I was a little kid in Sydney, and she was a dog breeder, so I started out in with dogs, and she had some fish, she had some birds, and then down the road in where I was living in Sydney, some guy had some snakes and lizards back in the early to mid 70s. And that got me hooked on reptiles and I've kept them ever since. In this room, I have the topmost 10 venomous snakes of the world. I have approximately 200 venomous snakes and I do have a few pythons as well. I think about 50 pythons maybe. So out of the top 10 venomous snakes, my favorite snake of all is the python. The reason I like them so much is they're so inquisitive. They're all always paying attention to what you're doing. They like to see what you're doing. They like to observe you. There's a little uh, dark coastal taipan. You can see he's not afraid. He's just curious what's going on. And everyone worries about taipans. As long as you, you, you handle them well, don't stress them, don't annoy them, don't be afraid of them, they're, they're easy to work with. I always feed at night time and I always clean during the day. Right? And what I find during the day is that's all I see. The snake in its hide box. And then at night time, when it's ready, it'll be out here waiting for me to, to feed. But most of the time, they, they're in their hide box. That's where they feel comfortable. You know, everyone thinks you need an elaborate cage system, but you don't. You know, something fairly simple works. As long as they have all their requirements, they're happy. What I find is that um, they do is they're so afraid of them that they mishandle them, and they turn the snakes from a gentle snake, which I think are, into a psychopath. Which if you start with nice babies, grow them up, make sure they're handled properly and safely, they turn out to be pussy cats. Yeah, nothing to be worried about. So the snake that kills the most people in Australia is an eastern brown snake. As you can see, unless you, unless you provoke them, they're not, that aggressive, they're not aggressive at all. These things are tricky not to be afraid of. The more afraid and more jumpy you are, it just transfers off again. I have all of Australia's top 10 deadliest snakes, but then it depends. Like to me, rattlesnakes are far worse, but their bites hurt like hell and they have far more negative effect on, on your tissue. Whereas most of our snakes, like if you get bit by a brown snake, sometimes you just feel like you had drunk a six pack of beer or something. You get bitten by something like a puff adder or a, or a rattlesnake, it hurts. And then you get all that muscle necrosis. So I'd rather be bitten by one of ours than one of the American or African bites, that's for sure. I've been bitten by both of them. <laughs> the top 10 is all based off the LD50, which is the lethal dose 
rate with 50% of mice injected with a venom dye. So that's mice, we're not mice. Some things roll over and, and are similar to people, but a lot of things don't. And it's simply as that. So, like in Australia, the way I look at it, if any snake can kill you, it is deadly. So what's it matter if it can kill you 20 times over or one time over? It can kill you. Who cares how many times it could kill you? You know, If you have a car accident and die, they don't say, oh, he was driving a Porsche, so he could have been killed 50 times, and the other guy was driving a BM, uh, Volkswagen or something, he can only be killed four times. Dead's dead. You know? so, to me, A, I've been bitten by vipers, I've been bitten by lapids, I've been bitten by a lot of stuff when I was young and stupid and, and didn't care. I mean, I've, I've hopefully matured enough, I have my own children, now I do things a little bit different, and back then, I didn't care, and now I do, but I have been bitten by both, and I'd still rather be bitten by Australian ones, because the first aid is so simple, the Queensland Department of Health Statistics are the chance of dying in Queensland once admitted to a hospital is 0.03%, so that's nothing. You know, you just put a bandage on and go to hospital. Where if you get some of the African vipers or American rattlesnakes, I mean, you get all that in a crisis. You, know, you can lose tissue, you can lose limbs. Well, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I worry more about pythons than venomous snakes. But I find venomous snakes far more relaxing. I find pythons far more likely to bite you. This is a Collett's black snake or a Downs tiger. They come from central Queensland on the black soil country. Settle down. Oh, I use these um, clear bins because a snake can see me and, uh, and I've always found that what, since I started using clear bins I have less adverse effects from them. And that when I had the other ones when they're solid over sometimes when you go to open the bin they jump a little bit whereas now they seem to be calmer. One of the, when cane toads were introduced into Australia back in uh, the 1930s one of the snakes, because they eat a lot of frogs, that was adversely affected by the cane toads, is a red-bellied black snake. But what's been happening now that the nature is starting to balance it out, the cane toad population is not so large down here as what it used to be. Cane toads, uh, sorry, the red-bellied blacks have worked out not to eat cane toads, and their population is starting to bounce back. This particular snake is very, very jumpy. Quite often it jumps out of out of his tubs, out of the cleaning containers. <laughs> to me it's important not only to know the species you work with, but the personalities of the individuals that you work with. Right, this same species and, and, and other specimens, I have no issues with. This particular specimen is just very flighty and very jumpy. This is uh, the northern brown. So the eastern brown accounts for more, for more bites. And this is just a close relative. If these lived where there was a, a denser human population, there'd probably be more deaths. But the Eastern Brown basically lives where humans live. And that's the big issue. So the brown snakes, you've got the Eastern Brown snake, which occurs over the most range. Then you've got the Dugite, which is a brown snake down around Perth. And you get the Western Brown, which is a smaller brown that occurs from the western side of Australia. Then you've got the Strapnose Brown, and you've got the Peninsula Brown down in South Australia, and you've got the Northern Brown up around Darwin. This thing goes from zero to 100. He's a nice snake, and that is perfectly calm, but then all of a sudden he just launches. This is a mulga, mulga snake. They call him the King Brown, but it's part of the black snake family. One of my favourites, they're very placid. This one here is a Central Queensland mulga. They're found most, most of the Central Australia. Across different areas they have uh, different colour variations. The red one's uh, Brigalow mulga and the greeny brown one's uh, Central or Western Queensland mulga. And you get the ones up north who are a bit paler. And the Alice Springs one, babies are green. Goldfield ones are black with yellow spots. I first started training people in venomous snakes when I was in West Africa as I found out that uh, a lot of the people in West Africa, when they got bit by a snake, they used juju, their local magic, and some lived, some died. And seeing as my interest has been for a very long time, venomous snakes, I figured if I'm there, I might as well help them with their first aid measures and show them what to do if they do get bitten. For many years, there was a, another mulga snake that was only recently described as a, another species. And if you look at them, you can see that the difference between them is very minor. But they, they finally proved out that they were two different species. 
And then they found out that there were three different species of the pygmy mulga. They're hidden in plain sight. You see how similar the, the, they are. This one here is the pygmy mulga, and this one here is the normal mulga, and these come from the same locality. And you can see to most people they look very, very similar. And in fact, they're two totally different species. So tiger snakes were one of the snakes that used to, used to kill the most people in Australia. It was uh, prior to a huge development of uh, housing areas. Tiger snakes were very common, especially around Sydney and Melbourne. And now because of all the development, it's pushed out the tigers, but what has come in is all the brown snakes. So now more people get bitten by brown snakes because they live with the people and the tigers have been pushed out of it. So they still kill people, but not so many as the brown snakes do. Everyone worries about a snake bite, but in Australia the chances of dying is so small it's not funny. And, uh, and I think to me that's when, when I do do the educational part of the, the work, that's what I like to emphasise people. There's no reason to be afraid because the chances of dying is actually extremely low. Just do the first aid, go to hospital. So. These are known as spotted black snakes. They come in a couple of different variations. So you have the, the two variations that I keep is uh, the red one, which is one here. It's that one. It's a red variation. And the other variation I keep is a solid black one, which is that one there. These are not known to kill anyone, but they uh, cause some severe reactions. In a rack system, I always keep my, um, my black snakes. I keep them up the top because they're a lot slower and easier to manage. And then my taipans and brown snakes I keep uh, further down because they're a bit more flight here. All my snakes drink filtered water. So I have a, um, a, a, a triple filter cartridge from, is it from, I think it's 10 microns down to 0.02 of a micron carbon filter. So there's nothing that comes through the water. And, uh, I drink better than me. <laughs> I could clean this whole rack. Um, right. Total, total clean, maybe in under two hours. To do this bank of six enclosures, it might take me eight hours to clean it fully and properly. Sunday's feed night, so that'll take me one, one to two hours, depending how much is, is eating and how much is it. Uh, cleaning will take me probably 12 hours of cleaning a week. Um, watering is probably an hour a week, so whatever that adds up to. So it's not too bad, but I've got it. I mean, all my papers cut the size, all the tubs are the same. It, it's all, I've got um, a cleaning station outside, I've got a cleaning station in here. So it's a matter of just routine like a robot on a Ford production line. All my cages are PVC board, and all the doors are perspex. There's no glass to break, and the snakes fall out, there's no warping of the wood, nothing. How it's built, it's how it stays. So I know Kathy Love keeps a corneotopia of various uh, corn snake variations, but well, I keep death out of variations. <laughs> so we've got this one here is a, a Douglas da Daly locality. This one here is a albino northern death adder. This one here is a high contrast Dejara adder. This one here is a Barkley adder. This one here is a Cape Crawford adder. This one here is a southeast Queensland common adder. This is a, a albino northern death adder. They're one of the, the more toxic venomous snakes in the world. Um, I find the albino ones, this is a female albino, she's a, a difficult feeder. These are ambush predators, so they'll just lie there and you'll never see them. And if you step on them, they'll bite you. That's a Dejara death adder. They're out from out by Mount Isa region. They're one of the more colourful ones in Australia. They're nice contrasting patterns. The ambush predator, they like to lie in amongst the leaf litter in the wild and wait for 
rodent or a skink or a lizard to come along and a lightning fast re reaction. I guess it's convergent evolution for the terrestrial vipers overseas. Even though they're an elaborate, they're quite viperish looking. But when they're small, they're quite difficult to get started on uh, small mice and that. Once they get bigger, all year round, um, the females are normally no problem, but the males, once breeding season comes, they get finicky to eat. I feed everything on, on uh, frozen rodents. Um, this one here is one of last year's young, and it's still been a, a finicky feeder. But patience, 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 and you get them to eat. So even though Australia has classically the most dangerous snakes in the world, we also have one of the lowest death rates to snakes, so there's no reason to be afraid. We have such a low death rate in snakes because our first aid is so simple. It's just a simple compression bandage around the affected area, and our medical system is pretty good. And all you gotta do is put a pressure bandage on, get to hospital, and you've got a 0.03% chance of dying. So even though Hollywood, etc., will say these snakes will kill you, and all the tourist ads always promote how dangerous our snakes are and how they're gonna kill you, in reality, there's no problem. <laughs>